Good morning. Morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to our Remembrance Day celebration for 2022. My name is Dave Schoff. I'll be acting as your MC this morning to try and keep everything organized and flowing as it should. We will be starting in about five minutes. A couple of things I just want to go over. There are washrooms. The washrooms are out in that hall over there. Emergency exits, it's the way you came in through the back, as well as to the right or to the left if in the unforeseen event that we had to leave quickly. Now, one of the things that I would ask is we do have these little portable computers we carry around with us everywhere we go. Could you just check and see that it's either silenced or turned off? We'd hate for that to disrupt today's ceremony. We will be getting started in about five minutes, so I would ask that you be in your seats, stay there, and in about five minutes we'll be getting started with our program. So, another five minutes. Thank you.
Well, we'll get started. Today is a day we set aside to reflect on those men and women in uniform and to celebrate their act of service. They include our Royal Canadian Armed Forces, but further to that, we'd also like to acknowledge those in our other services, Canadian Royal Canadian Mounted Police, our servicemen and women in community policing, our firefighters, our medical services professionals, and our paramedics. Those are ones that on a day-by-day -day basis today, they are serving us within our communities. Remembrance Day is a time to recognize and celebrate our veterans who have put on their uniforms to defend Canada's freedom. And especially want to commemorate those men and women who sacrificed their lives for our freedom and liberty. Their selfish devotion to protect democracy did cost some of them their lives. For this, we are truly grateful. And at this time, I would ask that the veterans from our National Defense Forces, if you could please rise. Thank you for your services and duty to our country. Do we have others that are currently actively serving in our military forces with us today? If there are, could you please rise as well? Thank you. And as I said, we'd also like to acknowledge those that serve in, in the roles of the RCMP, community policing, firefighters, paramedics, uh, medical professionals, could you please rise so we can recognize you? Thank you. We want to acknowledge that Canada is a nation of many, people that have come from many backgrounds, many lands. These include our Indigenous communities, European Canadians, Asians, South Americans, and many other cultures from around this world that have made this country what it is today in the country that we call Canada. They have also put on their uniforms to defend the freedoms that we enjoy in this great country. And this allows us the experience of liberty that we have to live, work, and play in peace. Today, we also want to remember our Sovereign, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We are truly grateful for her 70 years of public service to the Commonwealth, to Canada, and to the world. Her unwavering faith in God kept her steadfast and most respected among world leaders and commoners alike. We will also pray for the nation of Ukraine. Later in this ceremony, we will be featuring a short video of the people of Ukraine who have stayed strong despite the current warfare and conflict that is happening in this country. And their freedoms and their democracy certainly are at peril. Uh, in tribute, though, to those from our community of Coaldale and surrounding area that have served in the past, the town of Coaldale has put together a short video. And at this time, we will have an opportunity to view it.
At this time, I would ask you to stand for the placing of the colors. Following the placing of the colors, Amy Allward will lead us in our national anthem, O Canada, and I would ask that you remain standing for that as well.
You may now be seated. At this time, <clears throat> I'll ask Mark Dick to come forward for his recital. If you'd like to follow along, we're going to recite the act of remembrance. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember. We have a moment. Um, what I'm going to do is I just want to speak a bit to the significance of the poppy that we wear. <clears throat> the poppy is a symbol. It's a symbol of our respect and of our gratitude. And gratefulness to the veterans who have fought in the conflicts that they have to achieve our freedom. But, but what is the history behind the poppy? After World War I, Madame Anna Gouron who was named the Poppy Lady from France, had been inspired by a poem, a poem that we're going to hear a little bit later, a poem by John McRae called In Flanders Field. Madame Guerriere saw this poppy as a way to celebrate our veterans and to help raise money for veterans' needs. Armistice Day came about, and the poppy became the symbolic means of remembering those who had fought and died for freedom during World War I. So this was an initiative then that was following World War I, but an initiative that we carry on to today. In 1921, the Canadian Legion was formed and adopted the poppy as the flower of remembrance. And over the past 100 years, this poppy has become the true symbol of our gratitude, that we shall remember them. And it is a symbol that still today is part of our traditions in Canada to celebrate and to remember the past and those that have fought for us. Uh, <clears throat> so the poppy is, is very symbolic, as is the wreath, and we will have a wreath laying ceremony later on. And, and those are all part of our tradition of how we honor those from the past. <clears throat> As you have a moment as well, too, there are out in the foyer a couple of poster boards on, on demonstration, and they are also in your program. And I would encourage you to take the time to look to those. Uh, these are our youth. This is in the words of the youth because it is so important that they know about what has happened in the past because they are the future generation, and they are the link to a change into the future. So take the time to look to the poster boards. Take the time to take a look at your program in, in terms of the images. Uh, we will also be featuring the poem later in our program. A very well written poem and, and I, I asked you to listen carefully as it is being recited by the author who is here today. We have a moment now before we start with the, uh, our actual last post and lament, but what I would like for you to do now, just, just in, in your own thoughts and minds for a minute or two, just to appreciate those that have fought for us, those that, and I'm sure for many of you, were part of your family that have fought in either active war or in peacekeeping missions from the past, in the past. Uh, and, and think of those and remember them, and think of those as we have people here today 
veterans, we have people here today in active duty, and we have people that are here today that go up and put their lives on the line for us every day, whether they be in our policing organizations, our firefighters, our paramedics, our medical staff, and, and just for a moment or two, give thoughts to those. Okay, at this time, I would ask for you to rise. The next <clears throat> portion of our program will be the last post, followed by two minutes at silence at 11 a.m., as will be happening across Canada. The lament, the ruse, and then lastly, our commitment to remember by Mark Dick.
they were young, as we are young. They served, giving freely of themselves. To them we pledge amid the winds of time to carry their torch and never forget. We will remember them. You may be seated. In my opening remarks, I made reference to the fact that we'd be sharing a video about the Ukraine. And at this time, it is my pleasure to welcome Councillor Bill Chapman forward to introduce that video. Social disharmony, another word for conflict. There are 27 zones of conflict in our planet today. Some of them affect global hunger. Well, today we focus on the Ukraine, a democracy embroiled in conflict. In the 1920s, immigrants came to Canada to escape persecution and the surgency of communism in the eastern states of the Soviet Union, fleeing Odessa and other parts of Russia. Mennonites, Catholics, and Lutherans of German descent, and others found Coaldale a most ideal to practice their faith and agricultural practices. And today we have over 750 people of Ukrainian heritage who have made Coldale their home. In 1991, the Soviet Union had co collapsed and the Ukraine had declared itself independent from Russia. Democracy was the new political, social, and economic climate in, in Ukraine as in other parts of Europe. While well, Ukraine applied to NATO and European Union and its economy was growing, and it began leading the world in numerous exports in agriculture. Well, throughout the following years, political and conflict surfaces between Russia and Ukraine grew, and NATO was reviewing Ukraine's application for a seat. But in 2021, Russia began flexing its strength on Ukraine. Canadians and countries around the world watched as Russia began massing troops near its borders with Ukraine. Then on tw February 24th of 2022 of this year, President Vladimir Putin issued attacks on its neighboring nation of Ukraine. This action put many states nation states, including Canada, on notice that their economies, that of energy, agriculture, and trade, would be jeopardized. Immediately, many nations around the world responded with sanctions on Russia. Democracy and freedoms have been put on hold. And many countries, including Canada and Coldale, have accepted refugees and immigrants from the Ukraine. The citizens of the Ukraine continue to stand strong despite losing their freedoms, and their safety, and personal properties. And yet their faith, their strength, and belief in unity stand strong. As we focus on this little short video, it portrays the resilience of the people of the Ukraine. And while democracy has been compromised, their people their families, and their youth stand strong together. Together we pray for peace and to stop this unnecessary war. You raise me up.
Each year, the Royal Canadian Legion sponsors youth programs. The Legion's motto is, the Legion believes in educating our youth about the high cost of freedom. It is one of our most important roles. We must impress upon these young people who have never known war that freedom was won at a cost of many lives. Young lives like their own. Students have submitted artwork to the Royal Canadian Legion, General Stewart Branch 4, poster and literacy competition for 2022. And I am pleased that we have uh, samples of their work. We have their work out in the foyer. It is included in the program, and I'd like to acknowledge those students. Kyle Leffers from Coaldale Christian School won first place provincially at the junior level. Her poster is featured on the front cover of today's program. Ben Harthorn from Coaldale Christian School won second place provincially at the junior level. His poster as well is on the back of our program. Aliyah Slump from Coaldale Christian School won first place branch winner at the junior level and her poster as well is within our program. Leah Van Kamen from the Coaldale Christian School placed third at the district in the intermediate level and as well her program is her poster is featured within our program. Now I mentioned a literary work. Uh, so a literary work titled This Generation was submitted to the Legion by Robin Behrman from Coaldale Christian School. And she was the first place Lethbridge and third place district level winner. At this time, I would invite Robin to come forward. I believe Robin is here. Yes, there she is. I would ask her to come forward so that she can recite her poem. This generation. His friend goes down, undetected. He tries to feel unaffected. He carries on, he faces fears. He aims at foes mid falling tears. The scent of blood fills the air. He feels the wind blowing through his hair. He squints and sees the world going black. His wife, his kids, a flashback. The pain ripping through his arm. Panic, fear, terror, alarm. Through squinted eyes, he sees the enemy, killing more and more men, lying helplessly. Gunpowder and tobacco filling his nose. All around him are running shadows. He tries to scream, but no sound comes out. He couldn't let his mind give in to doubt. He tries to sit up, but the pain overpowers. He remembers all the long hours. He had spent with his children and wife, but this now was the end of his happy life. He is gone. He powers down, but he had fun. Headset is off, the game is done. He, run down the, he runs down the stairs, it is dinner time. He no longer sees the dirt and grime. The death and blood, the boots pounding in the mud. He does not give one thought to the disgrace and how these events really took place. To him, it is just a video game. They don't see the real world the same. Boys of today, men of tomorrow, how will they defend in war and sorrow? The freedom one has made us small. They are not like those who gave their all. We do not seem to appreciate their sacrifice that was so great. The men that fought for our land, all who were so brave and took a stand. Rise up and look to the men of yore who gave themselves for something more. May we show our great admiration by standing up as this generation. Thank you, Robin. We are privileged today to have a guest speaker with us, retired warrant officer Chris Damjunov. Chris has served 40 plus years in the Canadian Armed Forces, all in the Royal Canadian Artillery, both with the regular forces and with primary reserves. He served in NATO forces in Europe, did tours to former Yugoslavia, in Bosnia, and in Afghanistan, both with the first. Royal Canadian Horse Artillery. He has seen post teams engage town New Brunswick, Lar, Germany, Shiloh, Manitoba, Lethbridge, 
and then his last posting was to the 3rd Division Headquarters in Edmonton. Currently retired and living in Coaldale, please help me in welcoming Mr. Chris Damjanoff. Thank you very much. I'm happy to have this opportunity to join you today and to be part of your Remembrance Day and Veterans Week ceremonies. Every November, Canadians pause to honour the achievements and sacrifices of those who have served our country in uniform. Generations of veterans and their families have stood tall in times of need to ensure that all of us can live in a free and peaceful country and a better world. Sometimes this means training our allies abroad so they can keep their people safe or joining peacekeeping missions when tensions are high. Sometimes it means helping out at home when there's a natural disaster or an emergency, whether it's a flood, a forest fire, or a pandemic. And sometimes it means to going to war to defend what we hold dear. Members of the Canadian Forces have served courageously in two world wars, as well as in Korea and Afghanistan, in countless missions around the globe, in our Army and our Navy, Air Force and Special Operation Forces. Being part of Canada's military can be a difficult and dangerous job. We do it because we want to make a difference, because we want to protect Canada, Canadian values and our way of life, and because we want to make the world a better place. This is why, on days like today, we gather to remember. And we gather to learn about the strength and sacrifice of Can Can Canadian veterans throughout our history and right up until today. The Battle of Vimy Ridge. When we talk about Canadian strength and sacrifice on the battlefield, the Battle of Vimy Ridge comes to mind. This, is, this was a key moment in the First World War, and it's becoming a defining moment in our country's history. Picture this, it's early morning on April 9th, 1917, 105 years ago. 15,000 Canadian troops have been given the job of taking back Vimy Ridge, a heavily fortified spot in northern France under enemy control. Attempts to reclaim the ridge by British and French forces have already failed. But the Canadians have spent months preparing. And so, in the face of thunderous machine gun and artillery fire with explosions of shrapnel all around them, the Canadians begin their advance. With incredible bravery and determination, they make their way up the ridge. They fought for four grueling days and nights until they were victorious. Vimy Ridge was one of the first times people from different parts of the country fought together as one. It showed the world what Canadian troops are made of. Sadly, the mission came at a heavy cost. Nearly 3,600 Canadians lost their lives, another 7,000 were wounded. Soldiers like Ethelbert Curley Christian, who joined the heroic march up Vimy Ridge as part of the 78th Canadian Infantry Battalion. He was one of many black Canadians who volunteered to serve the country in the First World War, despite the discrimination they faced. After taking on enemy fire, Curley became trapped in a trench for two full days. He was eventually rescued, but lost both his arms and legs. It was a terrible injury. In true Canadian spirit, Curley recovered and went on to help create a program for disabled veterans, one that's still offered today. Dieppe Raid. Curley's story is a sobering rem reminder of the cost of war. Another reminder is the Canadian raid on Dieppe during the Second World War. Just 25 years after the Battle of Vimy Ridge, Canadian soldiers were once again tasked with recapturing an enemy position in France. Only this time they were not able to claim victory. Nearly 70% of the Canadian soldiers who took part in the Dieppe raid were wounded, taken prisoner, or killed. It was Canada's worst single day loss of the entire war. One Canadian soldier who survived was Paul de Lorme. 
Paul was one of the thousands of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit soldiers who fought for Canada in the Second World War. He was wounded by a grenade during the Dieppe raid and taken prisoner. He was only 21 years old at the time. After three harsh years in captivity and two attempts to escape, Paul was finally released at the end of the war and got to go home. He passed away earlier this year at the age of 101. Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service. Despite the risks, when Canada or our allies are in need, members of the Canadian Forces step up. When the Second World War broke out in 1939, thousands of Canadians signed up for duty. And even though only men could serve in combat at the time, thousands of women played an integral role as well. In fact, this year marks the 80th anniversary of the founding of the Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service. Throughout the Second World War, more than 6,700 women enlisted in the Women's Naval Service, also known as the Wrens. They were stationed in Canada, United States, and Great Britain. The Wrens filled dozens of essential roles, including analyzing key data that made Canadian ships safer from devastating German mines. The work, they sa uh, the work saved countless lives. The fir their first Canadian director was named Adelaide Sinclair, a trailblazer who spent her entire life breaking barriers for women. Adelaide's impressive leadership helped make the Wrens a vital part of Canada's war effort. She became the Canadian, first Canadian woman to earn the rank of captain in the Royal Canadian Navy and was even awarded the Order of the British Empire in 1945. These days, stories of courage and compassion from members of Canada's armed forces are inspiring a whole new generation of Canadians. Because the truth is, the job of protecting freedom and keeping us safe is never done. There are always new challenges to face and new missions to support both at home and abroad. Members of the Canadian Armed Forces continue to lead and they continue to serve, supporting peace and democracy, helping valuable people and making the world a better place for everyone. Over the years, Canada's military have, have played a crucial role in responding to natural disasters in every part of the country. Like in Manitoba in 1997, when melting snow from the Red River created a once-in-a-century flood that threatened the lives and homes of thousands of people. 8,000 Canadian Armed Forces members were called to the scene. They helped fill sandbags, track flooding, and take care of the Manitobans who had to flee. Their hard work and expertise helped ensure that, despite the massive flooding, not a single Canadian life was lost. Canadian Armed Forces members were called into action again the following year, when a huge ice storm hit Ontario, Quebec, and New Brunswick. More than 16,000 military personnel stepped up to help their fellow Canadians, making it the largest deployment since the Korean War. They cleared roads for emergency vehicles, restored telephone lines, delivered badly needed supplies, and checked in on vulnerable residents with no heat or electricity. Of course, natural disasters are not the only time CAF members are called into service on Canadian soil. Every year, the Royal Canadian Air Force responds to about a thousand search and rescue missions across the country. And the Royal Canadian Navy works alongside the Canadian Coast Guard to intervene when there's an emergency on the water. Since the earliest days of COVID-19, Canadian Armed Forces members have been there to help Canadians through this unprecedented crisis. Whether it's supporting elderly residents in long-term care facilities in Quebec and Ontario, or assisting hard-hit Indigenous communities in remote parts of the country or distributing vaccines to Canadians from coast to coast to coast. The work these days does not, does not stop at Canada's borders. Canadian Armed Forces members can be found all across the globe helping to protect people in danger and making the world a safer place to live. For example, in the lead up to Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine, Canadian Armed Forces members helped train thousands of Ukrainian Special Forces. I know how proud the Canadian Armed Forces members are to have worked closely with our Ukrainian allies and to see them defend their country so bravely. We also train with militaries in other parts of Europe, like in Latvia. We're working closely with the United States to stop the flow of illegal drugs across our borders. In 2018, Canadian Armed Forces members were called upon to support a UN peacekeeping mission in Mali following a violent coup in that country. And last year, we returned to Afghanistan to help people who escaped the Taliban after the fall of the democratically elected government. 
No matter what the challenge, no matter the place, members of the Canadian Armed Forces are ready to spring into action when we need them, whether it's on land, at sea, or in the air, whether it's in communities here at home or in countries far away. I was proud to serve in the Canadian Armed Forces. I'm proud to have served my country, and I'm proud to serve all of you. I hope you'll take the opportunity to reflect on the role of our military has played and continues to play in making Canada the country it is today. If you know a member of the Canadian Armed Forces, past or present, be sure to thank them. That always means so much. Listen to the stories, understand their sac sacrifice, and together let's continue to honour those three, word, three secret words, lest we forget. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for your perspective from being within the armed forces. And yes, we do fully appreciate your works and your efforts. Sometimes we struggle, though, in how to show that. And, and I appreciate your words that we do need to acknowledge those when we have that opportunity. Now, at this time, we have greetings from our Member of Parliament, Rachel Thomas. It'll come up on the screen momentarily, right? Maybe. <laughs> Since 1919, Canadians have gathered together on November 11th to pause, remember, and honour the tremendous sacrifices of those who fought for our liberty. We take this opportunity to honor the men and the women who counted the cost and paid the greatest price to stand up for their country and the values upon which it was built, namely freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. It's hard to imagine what this world might look like today had these heroes not taken it upon themselves and shouldered the responsibility to defeat communism tyranny and authoritarianism all around the world. As beneficiaries of their sacrifices, it is therefore incumbent upon all of us to continue to uphold the principles and the values that so many of our brave men and women gave their lives to defend. On this Remembrance Day, with a poppy over our hearts, let us remember the tremendous sacrifices made for the defense and the preservation of the precious freedoms that we enjoy each and every day in this country. Let us keep the faith with all who have died, lest we forget. Thank you to Rachel. I'm sure that if she could, she would be here, but I expect today is a very busy day for her. Although, in our presence, we do have our member of our Legislative Assembly, Mr. Grant Hunter. He will bring uh, words as well, too. Grant? Grant, yes. Please help me in welcoming Grant Hunter. <clears throat> I'm not as tall. First of all, I want to thank Renee and, and Sean for sharing their, their talent and music with us. Uh, I always find it, the, the last post, um, and the lament, very, very touching. And I also want to uh, thank um, all those who have taken part in, the, in, in this uh, opportunity to be able to share how they feel about about uh, those who have, uh, have sacrificed. Um, I think that Robin did a great job of expressing the new generation's view, and uh, so I thank Robin for that. We recognize fr Friday, November the 11th, as Remembrance Day, a time that we honor and remember all the brave men and women who have served and those who continue to serve our great nation in times of conflict, 
and peace. In the war-torn fields of the First World War, red poppies bloomed among the graves of the fallen. These flowers are a tangible symbol of remembrance of their sacrifice, their bravery, and their suffering. Humbly, we stand here today to thank and honor our veterans on Remembrance Day. Freedom was gifted to us by those who stood against tyranny. For this reason, it is our privilege to never forget the service and the sacrifices of more than one and a half million Canadian soldiers. They died, they lived, they suffered, so that we might have the freedom to live here in Canada, where we live in peace and prosperity. We are all beneficiaries of their sacrifices. We remember the sacrifices of the doctors who watched their children, or the doctors and nurses who tended the wounded, the parents who watched their children fight against an enemy from which they could not protect their children, the children who were too young to understand why their mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers would not be coming home for Christmas, the young boys who were shipped off to fight before they had the chance to mature as adults, or the kids who had to grow up too soon so that they could take care of their families in the middle of a war. Ladies and gentlemen, as we stand here in peace and safety, we pay our respects to all the fallen, all the wounded, and all who served in conflicts over the last 100 years. We remember those who volunteered, sacrificed, served, fought, and died for our freedom. We thank you and we salute you as we salute those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. As Albertans and Canadians, we live in the light of better days. Through our time, honored defense of freedom, democracy, human dignity, and the rule of law is all important to us. Canadians died for those core values. They laid their lives down for us. Today, tomorrow, and always, we will remember their sacrifices and live in remembrance of them, lest we forget. <coughs> We have some people here that are going to help us with the laying of the wreaths. I would ask them at this time to go to the back so that you can get assembled for that part coming up shortly within our program. But before that, we have a recitation of In Flanders Field. That will be done by Chief Warrant Officer Brian Brown of the Canadian Armed Forces. And the reply to In Flanders Fields will be from retired Sergeant Wendy Nelson, also of the Canadian Armed Forces. So, uh, Brian, if you could, yes. It's my honor to be able to uh, recite the poem in Flanders Field. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark her place in the sky. The larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you, from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow and flanders feel. In Flanders Field, the cannon boom and fitful flashes light the gloom, while up above, like eagles, fly the d fierce destroyers of the sky. 
with stains the earth wherein you lie is redder than the poppy bloom in Flanders field. Sleep on ye brave, the shrieking shell, the quaking trench, the startling yell, the fury of battle hell shall not wake, shall wake you not for all is well. Sleep peacefully for all is well, your flaming torch aloft we bear, with burning heart an oath we swear to keep the faith, to fight it through, to crush the foe or sleep with you in Flanders Field. As with the poppy, the wreath also symbolizes our respect, our gratitude, and our remembrance. We will now enter to that part of our ceremony today with the laying of the wreaths. We have a number of organizations that are present today that will lay a wreath into the stands we see up front. And we should be just about ready to go. as I'm waiting for my first wreath layer. <laughs> well, as we're waiting, let me share you a few other, a few other thoughts here. This is about the significance of Remembrance Day. Now, the goal here is to encourage a true appreciation of the freedom and the democracy of those that have fought for us in the past. Now, there have been many wars in the past, and these wars have had come at a great cost to many. It's the lives of those that were lost in the battlefield. It was the impact of the families at home many perils and destruction, the devastation from those wars. We think of World War I, World War II, the great wars that we had hoped to bring peace and stability, but unfortunately, that does not seem to have happened. Canada has moved mostly into a peacekeeping role since then, with our time in Congo, Korea, Middle East, Bosnia, Rwanda, Haiti, Afghanistan, and many others. But, but even Today, we, are, we continue in our role of importance in the military. New deployments are happening. We, and just recently, there's an individual that I actually, I know. Uh, Matt, Captain Matt Vergitz of Coaldale is just recently being assigned from Edmonton to Poland. And he'll be going to Poland this December. So we are continuing in our tradition of supporting our country. And, and as you heard, and Chris mentioned this, is that we need to remember those. We need to thank them when we see them. We need to talk to them, ask them about their time. Those that were in the military, active duty, and those that we see more here at home in terms of our Canadian armed, or, or uh, beyond our Canadian Armed Forces, but the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, those in community policing, firefighters, paramedics, those in the medical professions, we need to thank them when they have the opportunity. Uh, and and that, that will go a long way for, to them knowing that we continue to support them. All right, we are ready for the wreaths. <clears throat> On behalf of the Government of Canada, Constituency, of, Constituency Manager, Dallas Newdorf. On behalf of the province of Alberta, MLA, Grant Hunter.
on behalf of Lethbridge County, Reeve Tory Campbell. On behalf of the town of Coaldale, Mayor Jack Van Ryn. On behalf of the bereaved mothers, Patricia Damjanov. On behalf of the Royal Canadian Legion, Diane Reed. On behalf of the veterans, retired Lieutenant Colonel of the Canadian Armed Forces, Lindsay Fraser. On behalf of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, Staff Sergeant Mike Newman. On behalf of Coldale and District Emergency Services, Kevin McCune. On behalf of the War Amps of Canada, Easton Prechuk.
on behalf of Third Coldell, Third Coldell Scouts, no. The Girl Guides, no. No, I know who it is. I see it now. <laughs> How about on behalf of the Coldell teachers and support staff? Yes, <laughs> Nicole Kaminsky. On behalf of Third Cold L Scouts, Finley Morris. On behalf of the Coaldale Girl Guides, Jessica Cox, Isabel Harker, and Abigail Harker. On behalf of the 4-H Beef Club, Lynette Slingerland and Ellen Slingerland. Thank you to our wreath layers. I know some of them were a little bit nervous, but they did a great job. And it is nice to see the young children, to see the youth being involved. At this time, I call back to the stage Councillor Bill Chapman. And Bill is going to introduce a tribute video to Queen Elizabeth. My tribute to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The world came to a stop on September 8th of 2022, almost exactly two months ago. All of us became riveted to the news, our televisions and radio, as we listened for some knowledge or some new knowledge of the state of our Queen and Sovereign her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Well, I myself remember exactly where I was. Actually, we all remember where we were at that moment when she passed. Our first impulses were to cry or to text our friends or call our parents or even our grandparents. Well, they too were listening and watching. The news anchors switched from war and politics, commerce, and the economy now to the Queen. For the next 10 days, every moment was spent on learning about our Queen, Her Majesty's history, and what she did for the Commonwealth, and what she did for the world. We learned about her vows 70 years ago. Her Majesty held, held the deepest pledge to her faith in God. She held a commitment to global peace and democracy. Queen Elizabeth II was loyal to her family, to her faith, and of course to freedom. 
and Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II devoted, built a, a devoted affection for Canada. And of course, with that, there was the Royal Canadian Armed Forces, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the Royal Canadian Mint. Queen Elizabeth visited Canada more than any other country in the world, and each of her 27 visits were very significant. Those included that of celebrating Canada's 100th birthday on Parliament Hill, the proclamation of the Constitution Act of Canada of 1982, and of course in 1992 to celebrate Canada's 125th anniversary, and many other visits and tours to our nations. And I was honored to be a, to uh, see two of those events. Many of our sovereign's appointments included that of inspecting the troops. Her Majesty had the greatest admiration for the strength and the color and the discipline of our Royal Canadian Armed Forces. We conclude with the celebration of her life and Queen Elizabeth II earlier had made a special invitation to our own Royal Canadian Mounted Police to participate in a future funeral procession and program. And that procession and program ultimately took place on September 19th of 2022. And of course, the world watched. Now this video depicts one of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's revered and one of her favorite honors. Our Sovereign's inspection of the Can Canada's troops and the RCMP. It was her fervent honor to visit with our nation's veterans. This video also expresses Queen Elizabeth's most beautiful smile. May God save the King. At this time, I'll invite Mark Dick back to the stage for the ben benediction. For the benediction. What a great morning of remembering. Um, let's stop and, and pray. God, we thank you for today. That we could stop on a, on a Friday and, and remember. We could stop and remember the men and the women who served uh, so amazingly in years past, uh, sacrificed families that sent their fathers and their sons and their mothers and their daughters out for our freedom. Today, those that serve to defend this freedom, to defend uh, the, the freedom that we have even to move around in our city, to gather together in our town, to sit and remember. God, I just thank you for this time that we could hear stories. Stories of sacrifice, of strength, and of courage. God, I pray as we leave here, we would be full, our hearts would be full of thankfulness. Thankfulness for these, these people. Thankfulness for what we have in this country. The freedom that we live with. God, I pray as we 
we live, uh, we leave here, we can remember. We continue to remember those sacrifices that were made for us, that we continue to share those stories, that we continue to be full of that uh, thankfulness, that freedom, that we continue to remember. Don't let us forget. Don't let us forget. Thank you for this time, God. Amen. At this time, I would ask you to please stand. The color party will retrieve the colors. Remain standing as Amy Aldred will, leave, re, will lead us in God Save the King. Party. Outward. Turn. On the left. Forward. Hard. Now the color party have indicated to me that what they will be doing following this ceremony is taking the color party and proceeding over to the cenotaph and then at the cenotaph they will stay there for uh, a number of minutes. Uh, if anyone would like to they will wait until we're dismissed here. If anyone would like to they can follow them over to the cenotaph as part of uh, behind their procession. Well, we, uh, as we conclude this ceremony, I, I'd certainly like to thank the organizing committee in putting this together. Um, we used to just simply hold these events in person. And then we had that other thing happen when we couldn't get together in person anymore. 
And what we did then is we continued to celebrate Remembrance Day, but through a virtual setting. Well, fortunately, we can get back together in person again. And isn't that great? Fantastic. But what we're doing, those, we're also live streaming. So we're taking some of what we've learned because it is important to extend the reach of this ceremony. It would be nice to have everybody here, but we can't. But they can then watch it online. And I, I suspect the town of Coldale will probably keep it on their website for a bit. The more people that know about Remembrance Day and understand the significance, the more important then do we acknowledge the sacrifices of the past. As we've heard a number of times today, Chris mentioned it, lest we forget. It was mentioned by Rachel Harder, by Grant Hunter, and in fact, Elias Slump's poster. Three simple words, lest we forget. And that's what this is about, is that we don't forget. It was wonderful to see the involvement of the youth today. The youth are our future. Now, sometimes we may get rather disheartened. We thought that war was behind us, and now we're faced with what we see happening in the Ukraine. I mean, how, how could this happen after the great wars that happened? Have we forgotten? But I'm, I'm, I, I feel good about the message from our youth. I, I want to go back and just read a portion of that poem, This Generation. Uh, Robin read the poem, so she set the stage with the first part of the poem of a young fellow down in the basement playing a video game. You know, that's what kids do nowadays. They play video games, and that was all that war was. But her message was so much more. And into the second part, she brought us back to reality. Boys of today, men of tomorrow, how will they defend in war and sorrow? The freedom won had made us small. We are not like those who gave their all. We do not seem to appreciate their sacrifice. That was so great. The men that fought for our land, all who were so brave and took a stand, rise up and look to the men of yore who gave themselves for something more. May we show our great admiration by standing up as this generation. So she's speaking then that this generation is not going to forget. This generation will stand up. And hopefully this generation will be different. We heard it in the voices of the young children from the Ukraine in that video. And it was, those were the voices of, of hope, of optimism, that there can be a better world. And that better world will come from this generation. So with that, lest we not forget, because I'm sure that they will remember as well. That concludes today's service. Thank you for your attendance. Yeah.